Look who's here. Steve Aliquette. He's tall enough to be on a Knicks postgame show, that's for sure. <laughs> Not but my sport. <laughs> <laughs> we got huge news, and, and yeah. I think the point here, and Alan loves talking hockey, too. Yep. You have Jack Hughes and Capo Caco, and after that, it's a huge drop-off. So whoever the Rangers get it to could be a transformative selection. Yeah, it's exciting because both players, guys, they could be termed as generational. And, look, a lot of people are not going to look past Jack Hughes because we've been talking about him for three years, and nobody's going to have the courage not to take him. I was saying that before the draft was ordered. So... It, there's one thing we can say, guys. It's going to be Jack Hughes, number one, and, and Kako's going to be number two. And I think that's the best case scenario for the Rangers. Why? Because he is ready. He is dominating men as a 17-year-old, just turned 18 in February, but he is dominating. I don't think we're going to see any of these other names on the board. Dylan Cousins is one guy that's captain material that you would look at. But there's a lot of noise right now about Kako going number one. I just don't think anybody has the courage to take him. And I think it's going to be Jack Hughes going to New Jersey and the Rangers are going to get Kako. And it's, it's a perfect fit because he is the player that Alexander Barkov is in Florida. Okay, he has the same amount of points at the same age, at the same level. They're both playing in the Finnish Elite League at the same time, same age. I am thrilled with the fact that when I watch him play, he plays a heavy game. He's not going to be light to play against. He's going to lean on you. He's going to take you to the net. It's everything Ranger fans love with their hockey players. When you watch him go, guys, it's not just hands, skill, footwork. We're talking about courage. Uh, he's going to get net front. He's going to use the defenseman as a screen. He scores all over the ice, and he drives it. So if you're going to talk about a guy where does the way he scores it right now at the Finnish Elite League level, will that translate to the National Hockey League? Yes. And he's going to be in the lineup next year. What an advantage that is for GM Jeff Gordon. He can already look to Panarin. He can already look to maybe, maybe it's uh, Mitch Marner coming from Toronto, but you can start game planning your lineup because you know what Kako's going to bring you. You don't normally see, I guess you're seeing it more now in the NHL, but it used to be that no matter who you drafted, you were going to wait two years or a couple of years to have them mature. Yeah. But you're saying at the top of this draft, as we've seen in the past couple of years, you got somebody that's going to step right in and play right away, but mm -hmm. not just play, be effective. Help you. And, and let's not forget, when we're putting a lineup together right now, you got Kako at this really nice number, entry-level money, Yes. right? Yeah. So you're still going to have that $20 million in cap space. He's not going to eat into that at all, and he's going to give you production for three years. And, and you're looking at, I'm telling you right now, if you're Panarin, right, and you're Paul Theofanis, Panarin's agent, you're looking at the Knicks as a, as a, a really, did I just say Knicks? You in the did post say game? Knicks. We'll <laughs> That's get how to that. excited I am right yeah, now. You're all fired up. <laughs> I hope this Give the luck. Knicks the luck. Hey, I hope this luck for the Knicks. Yeah, can okay? we get the Stephen McDonald shield to bring it to the, <laughs> the NBA it. draft as well? Something good's happening here, guys. I mean, I ran here from Grand Central, and I'm hot and sweaty <laughs> and a little bit bothered right now. <laughs> it's all right. But I'm telling you. It's a great day for you, the Rangers. You, but you don't believe that, obviously, that the Devils did get Nico Hischier a couple of years ago. Isn't he a kind of similar, small skill player? Wouldn't they want to go, all right, we'll get the bigger player here, and could Jack Hughes potentially? Is there even a percentage chance that he can end up at number two, and the Rangers could have, again, either guy, it's, it's, a, it's a win. I hear what you're saying, but you know what? I just don't think that anybody wants to put their job on the line to not take Hughes. I don't think anybody would do it. And, and right now it's going to be Shiro, right? He's on the clock. Is he going to announce it? He just got an extension. It? I wonder if he's going to announce it. Right. But we're going to take out. him. Yeah, like yeah. We're, we're taking him and it's done. But I just don't see anybody doing it. Uh, yeah, pressure's on Shiro, of course, to make the call. But when you watch this kid play, right, and you actually already have seen a glimpse of his brother playing for Vancouver, mm -hmm. Quinn Hughes, mm -hmm. and these guys are dynamic players. They're finesse players. Uh, they're going to surprise you with speed. And we see that in the NHL right now you know that's a lot of the NHL games so I think a lot of people are excited about Jack Hughes I'm just more excited about Kako yeah. I, I think he's gonna be better in the long run and he's bigger stronger faster right now so Capo Zion maybe you know you could have something you, I wish you are kind of luck come in here. I wish you are kind of luck <laughs> anything could happen you never know but Taylor Hall by the way he's on teams everybody gets number one pick whatever team he's on so for the Devils yeah. more good luck thanks so much for dropping by oh, good to see you I'm man pleased. let's do this more often